You have brought disgrace upon this family. Please forgive us. The night was still, with the moon casting a faint glow over the sleepy village of Umucheze. In a modest bungalow at the edge of the village lived Neka and her two children, Amara and Chibuzo. Amara was 18, a fair-skinned girl with a quiet demeanor that marks her fairy determination. Chibuzo, two years older, was tall, handsome and quick-witted. Though they shared a home and called each other siblings, they were not related by blood. Neka had married Chibuzo's father, Obina, after Amara's father died many years ago. Obina passed away a few years later, leaving Neka to raise the two children alone. The family appeared no more, but hidden beneath their peaceful facade was a secret darker than the moonless nights of Umucheze. Amara and Chibuzo grew up as siblings, sharing laughter, meals, and chores. They helped each other in school, defended one another against bullies, and even shared childhood secrets. But as they grew older, something strange began to change between them. What started as innocent sibling affection morphed into something neither of them fully understood nor could resist. Amara noticed how Chibuzo's gaze lingered on her longer than necessary, and Chibuzo became uncomfortable whenever Amara smiled at him in her casual way. They both knew their thoughts were wrong, but they never spoke about it. It was as if acknowledging the growing tension would make it real. Then one fateful evening, their unspoken feelings surfaced. It started with a power outage one night. Neka had gone to a neighbor's house to attend women's meeting, leaving Amara and Chibuzo alone. With the kerosene lamp, casting flickering shadows, they sat on the living room floor, talking about everything and nothing. One thing led to another, and Chibuzo playfully pushed Amara, making her fall against him. Their laughter faded as their faces drew closer, and for a moment, they stared into each other. What happened next was a blow. It was as if they had been possessed by a force they couldn't control. They kissed, quickly pulling away in shame and silence. That night, neither of them could sleep. Guilt and confusion gone at them, but so did an implacable longing. From that day, their bond deepened in secrecy. They found excuses to be alone together, doing chores, fetching water from the stream, or staying up late after Neka had gone to bed. Their actions became bolder with each passing day, yet they convinced themselves it was harmless as long as no one knew. But secrets like smoke have a way of escaping, no matter how tightly they are contained. Neka began to notice changes in her children. Amara was more withdrawn, avoiding eye contact and blushing for no reason. Chibuzo, who was usually carefree and loud, became unusually quiet when Amara was in the room. The siblings no longer fought over petty things as they used to. Neka found this strange. One afternoon, as she cooked in the kitchen, she overheard muffled laughter coming from Chibuzo's room. She paused, straining to hear. The laughter stopped abruptly, followed by hurried footsteps. When Neka stepped out, she saw Amara emerging from Chibuzo's room, her face red and flushed dead. Amara, what were you doing there? I... I was just asking Chibuzo for help with my schoolwork. Amara stammered, avoiding her mother's piercing gaze. Neka said nothing but nodded slowly. She decided to keep an eye on them. A week later, Neka came back home earlier than usual from the market. She entered the house quietly planning to surprise her children, but as she approached Amara's room, she heard soft whispers and giggles. Her heart sank. She recognized Chibuzo's voice. With trembling hands, she pushed the door open and froze at the side before her. Amara and Chibuzo lay on the bed, their faces filled with shock and guilt as they crumbled to cover their faces. What is this madness? Amaka burst into tears. Why she was a sad frozen. Neka's was spun as she leaned against the door frame for support. She had only trusted her children, but this betrayer caught the What have you done? Do you know what this means? She stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind her. Amara and Chibuza sat in stone silence. Neka paced the living room, her mind a whirlwind of emotions. She couldn't believe what she had seen, her own children indulging in something so shameful and forbidden. Her thoughts shifted from anger to sadness, to worry about what the future would hold if this truth ever came to light. The village of Umucheza was small, 
and secrets had a way of spreading like wildfire. Amara and Chibuza, still trembling with shame, dressed hurriedly and sat on the edge of the bed, unable to look at each other. The reality of their actions had finally hit them. After what felt like an eternity, Neka called them into the living room. Her stern expression silenced their feeble attempts at apology. Sit down. Amara sobbed quietly. While Chibuza stared at the floor, his hands clenched into fists. You have brought disgrace upon this family. Do you understand what you have done? Do you know how shameful this is in the eyes of God and man? We are sorry, Mama. Sorry. Sorry cannot fix this. Do you know what will happen if the village hears of this? People will mock us, and no one will respect this family again. Jibuzo finally spoke, his voice shaking. Mama, we know we have sinned, and we are ready to face the consequences. Please forgive us. Neka shook her head, tears streaming down her face. How do I forgive something like this? You are siblings, even if you are not related by blood. The world sees you as one family. This is abominable. After hours of crying, shouting and pleading, Neka finally calmed herself enough to think clearly. She loved her children deeply, but she couldn't let them continue down this path. Chibuzo, you will leave this house. You will go to Lagos and stay with your uncle. You will not return until I say so. Amara, you will focus on your studies. Both siblings nodded, their hearts heavy with guilt and sorrow. They knew they had no choice but to obey. The next morning, she was a practice belongings and left for Lagos. Neka made him swear never to speak of what had happened to anyone. Amara, meanwhile, was sent to live with her grandmother in the neighboring village, away from the prying eyes of Umuchese. Moon turned into years. In Lagos, she was found a new sense of purpose. He enrolled in the technical school and began learning a trade. The distance from his family gave him time to reflect on his mistakes and seek forgiveness through prayer and hard work. Amara, under the watchful eye of the grandmother, devoted herself to her studies. She graduated with honors and eventually moved to the city to pursue a career in nursing. Neka, though still burdened by the memory of that fateful day, found solace in her faith. She prayed for her children daily, asking God to guide them and heal the wounds in their hearts. Years later, Chibuza returned home for the first time. He was now a responsible young man, engaged to be married. Amara too had grown up into a strong, independent woman. When the family reunited, there was an unspoken understanding that the past will remain buried. Neka welcomed them both with open arms, her heart full of gratitude that her children had found redemption. Though the scars of their actions remained, they had learned from their mistakes and were determined to live honorable lives.